you talked a little bit about about creative, and and I'm really interested in creative. I think that, you know the more that media buying is automated, the smarter that Facebook gets about how to sequence ads and all of these things. I think there's going to be so much emphasis on creative capital and that ability to actually stop the thumb, as you say. So would you say that that creative process is is a really is like a, a, a critical component to your business? And the follow up question to that would be, how do you take your sort of like weird Rush Brothers creativity uh, and, and and be able to infuse that throughout an entire organization so that all the media buying team is is thinking about ads in this sort of creative way? I, I definitely think that, you know, Facebook is going towards branding. You know, you see a lot of awesome brands and, and you know, Dan and Josh is live over the past two days, you know, kudos to those guys, you know, they're doing it how you should be. And if you have good creative, you have good copy, you're going to create a loyal following. And the biggest thing is you have to disrupt the newsfeed. You know, a lot of people use Getty images or they use place it, or they use just these shitty CGI renderings. Well, if you're going to create a brand, not only are you investing in yourself, you're investing in a long-term sustainable asset, pay for a damn photo shoot. So if you build up all of these visual assets, video assets, hire a videographer, don't just use Upwork or Fiverr, you know, truly invest. And if you're able to create good content, you know, it, it's almost like steroids for ad sets. Because if you're just using a white background image, you know, it's boring. So a lot of the imaging that we do, you know, across our own brands, partner brands, all of that good stuff, it has to look real. So it can't look like, you know, a place it image where you can very clearly tell it's just a CGI rendering. It has to look real. It has to look genuine. What our goal is, anytime we're selling anything, it has to look like one of your friends posted it because that's how you're gonna get them to stop the scroll. And that's our number one goal. I didn't mean to make that rhyme. He's also here. He wanted to be an R&B star or a wrestler when he was a kid. So well, and you mix those together. You've got a great Coco Beware's kind of st- like <laughs> white version. That's, I, think, I think you got something there. Yeah, and honestly, I'm only 29 years old, so I've still got plenty of time in life to make both of those things happen. Vince McMahon didn't become a wrestler until what? Until he's like 65 or something like that. And then he got jacked on steroids. So, yeah. Crazy story. Vince McMahon owns one of the synonymous steakhouses in Raleigh, North Carolina. Yeah, we're going to go down a rabbit hole here with uh, <laughs> these wrestling references. Uh, you're going to get a phone call. Oh, oh we'll, we'll do a figure four leg lock in Vegas for sure. Uh, so, I wanted to ask the question I've been asking all during these 12 days of Christmas interviews, I've been asking everyone is uh, you know, what they sort of really took from uh, Q4 this year. What, what, are, what are some of the key lessons that you put into place this Q4 that has made it a bigger success than previous ones? I don't know if this leads into, into omni-channel like you were discussing, but 